How's, uh, how's Cisco Live so far? Good. Right? How, how, many, how many Cisco Lives has this been for you? Many. Too many? <laughs> you don't want to tell me, okay. This is my second. So just, just by, so maybe I'll spend a little bit of time uh, introducing myself. Uh, this is my second Cisco Live. Uh, I work uh, um, at AppDynamics, which is now part of Cisco. Uh, last year when the acquisition was announced, uh, you know, that was the first time for us. You know, we, we just walked in, just impressed with the enormity of the event and, you know, the type of customers and, and the range of customers we met. So it was great. So this year we came really prepared uh, and with, with the integrations to Cisco. Uh, for example, yesterday you heard uh, Chuck uh, talk about you know, the power of data and, and when you unlock the data, what it could mean uh, to our day jobs in IT. Uh, so that was, that was really the, the exciting part of the vision behind AppDynamics acquisition. And, and, and today you, guys, you heard um, uh, Geckler talk about the power behind the ACI integration. You know, when we can actually have full visibility at the policy level uh, you know, between the layers of infrastructure, whether it's networking or data or security, all the way up to, up to applications, uh, what does that type of visibility and, and um, correlation bring to us? Uh, so that's really exciting. And for me as a, uh, as a career engineer, and now coming up on 22 years, uh, you know, the, the role of IT, uh, you know, I'm, I'm an optimist, uh, and, and every five years, every 10 years, when there's a new uh, paradigm shift, you know, people talk about now IT's role is going to really change. Uh, and I've always believed in it, you know, through the 90s and through early 2000 internet and, and now through cloud and IoT. I've always, you know, it was very easy for me to believe it, but I actually, now, now as I'm getting older uh, and getting to the big scale of Cisco, uh, I actually feel genuinely that the, the role of IT is changing. Uh, you know, it's changing in pockets already and I, I think it can change in, in, in bigger numbers. Uh, so that's the prepared content I have uh, for us today here. I want to go through that very quickly. I have a few best practices, few trends that we're seeing at, at the very top in the application layer and, and how we are seeing our benefits, uh, our, our customers in the IT benefit from it. And then towards the end, I have a quick call to action. Uh, we have some exciting things to show off right here uh, in, the, in, the, in the demo stations. I want to make sure you guys see it before, before you go home. Uh, and then I'm sure we'll have some time, and I would love to have some uh, interactive uh, Q&A here in the room or, or right after the session if somebody else is coming in. Fair enough? All right, so let's go through it. Um, so, you know, whether it is, uh, well, you know, the, the, the legal notice here. Um, so it's, it's all about customer experience. You know, you guys know this. Uh, you know, for a while now, what we've been noticing, you know, through the internet, through the mobile, and now through IoT, uh, the customer is really getting spoiled, right? It's, it's really about that flawless experience uh, for the customers, whether it is coming from your point of revenue, you know, if you're an insurance company or a bank or, a, or an automotive, you know, that connected experience for the customer uh, has gotten into a stage where it's, you know, very much in high expectations, right? So they, they want a flawless uh, execution of their software. And we also see that in, in the back office, you know, when, when it comes to customer experience. When I was briefing an insurance company executive this morning, and, and for them, the, the focus is not just on just making the money and, and catching the revenue, but also importantly, post-sale. Right? How do we take care of the customer? When they call their call center, uh, how do we quickly, without wasting time and asking 20 questions about why are you calling? Did, did an app crash on you? Were you using mobile? Were you using a browser? Were you using a kiosk? All of that in this day and age should be very clear, real time, by the time the customer calls you. Right? So that the, the customer call center agent can focus more time on, on solving the problem, you know, alerting your uh, ops team, uh, and offering a solution if possible right there. So, so that is the nature of um, the world we live in right now where customer experience is primary. And if, if it's not happening, we're seeing very fickle uh, end users. They will churn, right? And, and you know, recently this uh, statistic came out of uh, Bloomberg uh, Note where we're seeing that uh, it's, it's called uh, a switching uh, effect where almost six to nine trillion dollars are actually switching from digital leaders away from digital laggards, right? This is astounding number. And it's not all top line number, it's also operational number, support cost, and all of that. Some of the brands, you know, the brand could be 100 years old, like, like Carhartt, a retail brand, a uh, very traditional retailer, where when they take a digital seriously and when they execute, you know, recently, you know, they're, they're a big customer of ours, and John Hill, their CIO, got uh, recognized as a top 100 CIO in the world. And, and one, of the, you know, one of the favorite quotes I have from him is, I feel for the first time, finally, that we're able to talk to line of business in, in one language, 
right? We're able to explain to them how, if it is a marketing campaign or if it's a post-sale, uh, you know, delivery of the goods, they're able to use the same KPIs very effectively, very, very flawlessly to explain to them how the business is doing and what's the impact uh, of a new technology or, or a new API that they've launched, right? That's kind of the visibility that uh, IT leaders can provide now. Now, all of that, you know, comes with a lot of complexities. You know, on one side, the end user experience is actually getting simplified and it's getting richer. You know, it's not just mobile apps anymore, it's, it's voiceover. You know, my six-year-old uh, daughter effortlessly orders stuff over Alexa, right? So it's getting simpler and simpler, and yet we know, in the room we, here we know, that the back end is actually getting a lot more complicated. Right, uh, you know whether it is uh, more distributed systems, you know a concoction of homegrown legacy and and, and new piped in uh, SaaS offerings. Uh, we got ton more dependencies now. You know we still have uh, some you know, old school legacy applications. Some of us have even main mainframes in the back end, uh, and and ton more dependencies from network to middleware, database, cloud, you name it. And However, our IT budgets are not growing, right? They're still flat. Uh, in some cases, they're actually shrinking if you look at net uh, IT budget. So how do we, how do we go from uh, a much higher demand from the customer experience and that kind of flawless experience to us actually delivering it? And, and then that's, that's kind of where uh, App Dynamics came from. You know, about 10 years ago when our founder started the company, uh, the timing was great because we were just looking at the early disruption of application marketplace. Uh, and, and we looked at, look, if we can enable our customers to move faster and not focus on just the bits and bytes and, and pieces underneath, but allow them to actually look at how the customer is looking at their application infrastructure, uh, not at the siloed individual uh, application view, but really the end-to-end, -end, what we call the atomic unit, uh, which is business transaction. If we can allow that kind of lens, I mean, if we can enable our customers with that kind of lens, uh, then they will focus on the right things and they'll have the ability to move faster. That was our belief when we started um, uh, AppDynamics, which, which became one of the fastest growing enterprise software companies ever in the history because the timing was right and our approach to helping you was right, which is it's not about you know, individual siloed monitoring, but really end-to-end -end monitoring. Right. So we started there, and then, then very quickly, we, what we found out is in, a, in our kind of second generation or a wave of products, what we found is once you unlock the, the visibility and auto, automatically discover what is the business transaction, the next thing that our IT partners want is, I don't want to follow everything. I actually want to follow what actually matters the most, right? And that's where we said, you know, when a customer logs in, and let's say it's a retail customer, and they go from searching the products, adding to the cart, you know, to the checkout, it's very easy from, you know, if you use AppDynamics today. Actually, by the way, how many of you are AppDynamics customers today in the room? It's great. So there's, there's quite a bit of selling to do here. Uh, so, so from an application monitoring perspective, this was our first discovery. This is where most of our intellectual property is. How do we let uh, a typical ops owner or app owner to quickly allow the discovery, auto discovery and baselining? And then once that happens, uh, looking through of all the services that you have, what are actually the important ones? Where is the customer focus at today, right? Isolating that and then just giving you the best KPIs on it so that you can look at it from a monitoring lens and, and make decisions, right? That allows you to, your teams to really focus on, on, on very quickly down to, look, it's actually the add to the cart function that's going slow. Everything else is fine. You know, we just changed some API uh, in the last release. Looks like that is the red. Everything else is green automatically baselining it and highlighting to you, instead of 1,000 clicks, down to three clicks, you know, what we call uh, you know, mean time to resolution. And that was the biggest thing that we brought to market uh, when we came in as kind of second generation APM vendor in the market, right? And, and that took off. So for us, you know, just imagine the amount of time that was saved uh, across enterprise IT when AppDynamics tool came in and, and started giving that automatic correction, automatic visibility into where the problems are. And, and instead of finger pointing and starting hundreds of war rooms, you're now able to very concretely say, by the way, we think database is where the problem is. And, and not only just say database is where the problem is, but actually point to that line of offending code. You know, it is this particular SQL statement that is actually getting locked or going into a recursive loop. So that type of you know, prescriptive ability to get to the, uh, the resolution is, is where we started our life in, right? And, and it's, been, it's been fascinating since then. And, and yet, you know, 10 years go by, and what we find is, despite having great monitoring tools out there, uh, us being one of them, only 12% of IT organizations today are actually being effective uh, in, in leading those digital transformations, meaning 
in, in some cases, the technology that's available uh, is being used mostly to uh, kind of run an X-ray and see where the problem is. And yet, our roles have not changed. You know, we're still reactive rather than being proactive and being, uh, you know, kind of holding the seat at the business strategy table, saying, you know, that marketing campaign that you want to run, I think we can do it at the same cloud capacity or even better. So having that kind of peer-to-peer -peer connection with line of business is still missing. And the role that IT has in terms of digital transformation was not of a leader. Was, was more of as a follower. So we looked at it and, and we, we found that in talking to a lot of our customer leaders and, and, and partners, what we found is you know, the real way, you know, if you want to be a leader for your business, uh, you actually have to drive the business. And all the pieces were in, right? So you, you were leading the company's most strategic mobile transformation. You were, you were leading you know, retail transformation. And yet, somehow the missing piece was you know, addressing those business KPIs. And that's kind of where we saw the next wave of opportunity at, at AppDynamics. And, and about a few years ago, we said, what if we can create that lens, not just the IT lens to how your applications are doing, but also provide a lens for the IT towards the business? Right? And that's, that, that's where our, our kind of next generation innovation went. And we said, you know, if we can combine the insights that we collect, so just imagine, right, all of your application infrastructure, you know, from login of your customers all the way to your renewals business, all the way to customer support, and most of that today is software. All of that is traceable, you know, whether it is through AppDynamics agents, uh, you know, in the code or through log systems at the network level, all of that coverage is something AppDynamics always provided. All that was missing was our ability to kind of bring that up into how does it ac actually matter to a top line revenue or a customer retention or a revenue optimization. So that was the uh, business insights that, that we worked with our uh, customers uh, cl very closely and said, if we can place that right in the middle, not a separate system, but it's basically think of it as the same, um, same telemetry, same agent that's sitting in your application code. What if it could also start capturing not just the non-functionals around latency and throughput and number of users, but to some of the business functionality? Uh, how, how, how good would that be for our IT user? So that's what we focused on. And, and, and one, of the, one of my favorite quotes from, from the customer is, you know, if you look at it from everyday lens, where you know, we're always innovating, we're always you know, pu pushing new code there, the best code is actually a code that understands what the right answer is. Right? You're, not, you're not guessing, you're not doing a very bottoms up approach, but you actually are able to correct in, in flight. You know, what we call in, in, inside our company as manage to the green, not, not react to the red. Right? The best time to experiment is actually when your business is doing really, really well. Right? So, so that, that's kind of uh, the approach we took and we said, what if we can empower IT leaders, whether they're application owners or net ops or, or just uh, IT ops or security leaders, what if we can actually give them that correlation between how the applications are working and what is their impact to the top line of the business or, or business uh, leading indicators? So that's, that's what we said. So let me give you an example. Uh, let's say you're a, you're a travel agency, uh, or, or in, for that matter, any, any business actually. You always want to know, you know who your top customers are, you know, who the platinum customers are. And if you want to create a flawless experience, you want to measure, you have you know, 20,000 customers coming in every day, but if you want to solve for a prioritization and say, look, the platinum business, I'm going to take care of it. If the experience for a platinum uh, customer, Mike Smith, traveling, you know, his average you know, deal is about $2,000 for us. I want to be very proactive to it. If, if there is a variation in the experience Mike receives, I want to give a heads up to the customer service organization. I want to give, give a heads up to the teams that are in the loyalty program. So I mean that's a, that's a rather you know proactive negative use case, but there are also positive use cases, right? When you run when you run a marketing campaign, uh, you know you have a, you have a coupon code for your frequent purchasers, and you have a coupon code for net new customers. What if? because they're all going through the, uh, the same lines of code, what if you could actually set alerts and then correlate them to core application performance, right? Uh, and, and that's really you know, what, what we launched in the market as Business IQ. The illustration that you see here today is, let's say you have two environments, or, or for simplicity, let's say you have a version one of a booking system and a version two of a booking system. Or let's say the same application, you're looking at cloud migration, and you wanted to be very confident before you push the button on moving all of your assets into the, into the cloud. You know, is this really impacting my business really positively? You know, is it, it's not enough to just say, hey, look, my app works great. You know, it's all green. Network layer is good, app layer is good, everything is good. But instead, what if we can actually tell the line of business that, hey, 
as you invested in my AWS migration or, or Pivotal or whatever your um, cloud foundation is, I can actually show that the business is actually doing better. The conversion funnel is, is looking that. This is a, a, a screen from AppDynamics, just so you know. It's, it's, it's called, we call it Business IQ, which is on top of uh, core APM that we, we sell. And, and this is showing you between the two variations of the same functional app, how a particular theme, like a cloud migration, is impacting the business, not just you know, non-functional things, but actually business KPIs. Today, an IT leader can have this. You know, he, can, he or she can send this to the board or, or the chief executive. And we see this happening now. It started about two years ago when we launched Business IQ, and the response has been tremendous. Now, we often get, you know, from, our, from our professional service engineers and from our field engineers, we get dashboards like that, you know, from a hotel company or, or from an automotive company or a retail company saying, hey, look, the CEO of the company is looking at this dashboard today. Uh, because, and, and simply going back to John Smith, um, John Hill, you know, the reason they're doing that is this is real time. Right? This, is, this is not a chief executive waiting, waiting till the end of the day or end of the quarter or end of the week to ask for a roll-up report on how, how did my business do after we went to AWS. This is you know, exactly you know, within, within a minute after you push the code, you're able to see this comparison live on the screen. So you can actually be very confident about that investment in, in, in a cloud migration or that investment in a, in a new feature. Okay. Um, and it also helps you, uh, it helps your development team, you know, from your perspective, you can actually tell them, hey, go code this first, right? Because that is working really well. Whereas, you know, we switch that API to a third party vendor, we are not so sure because we think we, 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 we're losing some business there because of that, right? So those are some of the, and this is kind of the blow up of the same screenshots. As you guys can see, it's not just about individual lenses of, you know, is my database doing well or is my network doing well? This is really top down the way your customers look at it or the way your, your chief executive will look at it, which is, hey, look, I can tell, you know, from those red circles, uh, you know, select flight, select passenger info, all of that is, is doing really well comparatively and the dollars are coming in. Uh, but if I look at, you know, by the time people put their credit card info, there is something going on there. And, and, and we can isolate that and say, looks like this is a user experience error. Maybe something is just you know, spinning wheeling too much, right? And that's why the customers are churning. And, and you could also you know, assert if it's happening on the mobile side or if it's happening on the browser side. And that's the power of business IQ and that's the power that a typical IT leader can, can today leverage. Uh, and this is the you know, next, so there are a lot of examples like this, right? It's not just about top of the line. You know, we have a lot of businesses here that may not be all digital. In fact, you know, some of the business could be uh, you know, in, in underwriting, for example. You know, we have a customer uh, you know, where you know, as you apply for a, a loan, there is actually a big step in between that is a lot of manual step. It's, it's human judgment, right? It's not everything is automatable, and yet, could we stitch together an end-to-end -end process right from the time uh, a customer applies for a loan all the way to it gets underwritten and then approved? Uh, that is the power uh, of systems today and, 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 and why, why our install base is so excited about this. So these are some of the common use cases here in release validation, which, which we briefly talked about. Uh, business health, which is how can we look at not just the application monitoring, but also business health monitoring at the, at the top level. Uh, segment health, you know, a lot of our businesses here, particularly travel uh, and federal, a uh, lot, lot of the systems there depend on channels. You know, these are go-to-market partners. We sell through B2B type of motion. There, it, it's important not to measure just one application, but the impact of an application on a particular segment or a particular geo or a particular region. Uh, so that's the segment of health. Uh, the last one, which is becoming really important, is user journey. Uh, you know, today, uh, to my point earlier, uh, you know, our ability to isolate and, and look down to a particular user and how they're experiencing, whether they're you know, ch doing check balance, check my balance for a bank, uh, whether they're checking it on a mobile or a browser or, or Alexa, uh, Alexa voice interaction, all of that is really important for your product line managers to keep really good tabs about how are they converting. That's user journey. And the last one is the business journey. And how can we actually put all of this together for, for an individual business? Um, and, and we have a deep dive session on this one a little bit later, but we can talk about it. Uh, but as far as you know, best practices go, uh, I thought I'll take a little bit of time and, and talk to uh, maybe have a discussion here around why do we think, if you take the example of a cloud migration, um, why do we think that correlation between application performance and the business performance is really important? And why does that actually enable us uh, to have a bit of a peace of mind uh, before we go all in with significant investments like cloud, right? 
So here is a here is kind of a deep dive example, right? Uh, we, we talked about it, you know, the, uh, so far. I mean, we are a big uh, cloud u users ourselves, and when we look at it, you know, before we we make make those moves, uh, you know, we kind of primarily look at. You know, is the database going to be the same, or are we going to switch to something else? Uh, is uh, is is the individual uh, integrations that we have with the backend systems? Do we have to rewrite them? Uh, you know, if yes, how do we test them? So those are kind of the uh, things that a typical migration project struggles with. Very rarely do we actually ask the questions of, you know, can we actually be pretty confident about? us hitting the business goals, and, and how do we instrument in such a way that we can capture that even in like week one of that migration project? And, and this, is, this is a real example. I think uh, a big customer of ours spoke recently, they're in the financial sector, and they said, look, you know, a project that was actually uh, for about 18 months duration to move 25% of our IT, uh, our, our app, apps infrastructure, we were able to do it much faster because right in the first wave, we got really comfortable that it's not just about application refactoring, but it's actually business is getting refactored. When we, when we move to AWS, here is the benefit we got. We were able to capture, you know, capture, capture that and show to our line of business, and they gave the green light saying, there's no risk anymore, let's go confidently. Right? So that's, that's one of the concrete uh, examples that I've, that I've seen recently. So as we do this, and, and, and here's something for us to kind of think about as we go to the demos there, is you know, we live, for the most part, in the, in, the, in the realm of having to watch each of these metrics at the bottom line. And this is at the network level, at CPU, the VMs, are they all performing? Do we have enough of it? Is the average response time doing well? And that's typically in the billions of those watch points, right? This is what AppDynamics starts measuring when you, when you start installing it. You know, by the billions, typical enterprise, we, we see billions of those in a day, right? But as we go a little bit higher, and this is the unique value proposition that we have with AppDynamics Cisco, uh, is your ability to start now measuring them, not at that you know, individual uh, metrics, but one level higher, which is business transactions, the kind of end-to-end -end flows uh, for your user journeys. And that typically comes to about hundreds of business transactions, depending on the size of the business, but typically somewhere from hundreds to thousands. Now, as you go one level higher, which is you know, where we talked about uh, you know, core business IQ value proposition, now we're talking about maybe a few dozens of key business functions, right? So this is where we're calling about you know, business metrics, you know, number of customers coming in, number of geos, all of that, right? And then at the very top is really the select KPI. So this is where, you know, from the board down to the, the chief executives, what they're looking at is really the business outcomes. So if you take the example of a cloud migration, or if you take the example of application refactoring or, or launching a new mobile app, your ability to look from the bottom all the way to the top and see you know, what, what did it do to a business transaction? How did it impact a business outcome? And how is the KPI looking? And being able to do this real time is where the magic is at, right? I think we truly, as, as IT uh, career people, this is a golden age where all of that information is available and fully transparent. I mean, we still have some, some, some black boxes, but you know, if you look at our own journey, and just in the last few years, we started supporting uh, SAP backend systems. We started supporting mainframe, because we do believe in this model, that for the first time ever, not only our st you know, strategic applications, but also legacy and core applications, they're all visible to us as, as, as part of the line of IT. And to Chuck's point earlier in the keynote uh, yesterday, just imagine what happens if you unlock the power of all of this. And, and just imagine what it does uh, to our everyday in the life of, right? So you know, we, we talked about, you know, really, does it improve our life? Right? Does it actually allow us on a weekend not to take our pagers or, or, or whatever we're using these days for alerting uh, to, to a good family time, right? And, and we believe in that. And we, you know, we, we eat our own dog food. You know, Cisco is a very big customer of, of AppDynamics for about 10 years now. In fact, as a customer, uh, you know, uh, the CIO's organization helped shape the company on our roadmap. We believe in this, uh, which is not only does it do a really good job of elevating IT's prominence to, for the first time, being a business stakeholder and allowing business to seek our advice before they do a, a significant strategy change, it also allows us to be in control. Right? And then where we're headed to is not just the insight that systems provide, but also, perhaps also, some of the automation. Uh, so that we don't even have to go there. With one click, we can actually tell the systems to do some of those triangulation. Uh, and I'll leave you with a with quote. You know, uh, I believe you know, one or maybe the top three uh, travel, travel companies in the world, uh, they do something like 1.2 billion transactions a day. Right? 
And, and the group CIO was telling me, Pratap, the reason why we trust Cisco and we trust AppDynamics is, you know, not that outages will go away. There'll always be performance uh, outages and, and some issues, you know, a, a, a company of our size. But what I like about this investment is that today I can actually tell them if I have two outages, you know, one outage that's coming from a very large airline, you know, they're worth $27 million a day to me, and, and an outage that's coming from a small airline from Sweden, Today, I can actually go to my line of business and say, I'm going to tell my entire team to focus on United Airlines because that is my number one customer. And I'm able to say that concretely with those business numbers. That information goes into not just you know, level setting with the, with the line of business, but also it goes into prioritization on IT systems like ServiceNow. Now, for the first time, IT can actually articulate that clearly, saying, this is real time. This is the nature of the impact. You know, at this rate, by end of the day, this is good or bad, right? So we, we, we had a good, good situation also. Last Black Friday, one of our um, IT uh, customers was able to tell their marketing folks, hey, look, you, know, you launched this Black Friday marketing campaign. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a shoe company. Uh, you, you launched this marketing campaign on Black Friday. It's 11 o'clock. It's 11, 12. You launched it at 11 o'clock. 11, 12, I'm telling you, your conversions are actually through the roof. They're doing really well. I still have a ton more cloud capacity. So if you want to send one more um, coupon to, to increase your campaign, now is the time. Because I, and I can tell it's working well, and I, I'm telling you I have more capacity to absorb. So go for it. So by noon that day, they pretty much m met their number for the campaign, and they got busy in, in shipping um, stuff to the customers. So that's, that's the kind of uh, the, the, the future that we're looking at uh, particularly. And, and you know, what I uh, suggest, and I think some of you are new to AppDynamics, what I suggest just as a, as a call to action here is as you spend more time uh, at Cisco Live, uh, there are a few things that we've prepared uh, for you. There are some deep dive sessions. Uh, the thing that I'm particularly very excited about is the ACI I integration that we're showcasing. It's uh, currently in beta, right Raj? Yeah, currently in beta. The team is here, they're, they're thrilled. We've, we've shown it, almost every customer, big or small, that we showed this integration to, they loved it. You know, the, the articulation around putting that correlation between you know, network layers, security layer, and the policies, all the way up to application, is a first in the industry. So they're thrilled and, and they can't wait uh, to start consuming it. So I highly encourage you guys to go see the demo, give feedback to our engineers uh, who are all here, uh, and, and we'll see where we can take this, because I, I do believe that role of IT is changing, and, and, and we all have a role to play in that change. Okay? Uh, so I think that's, that's it from a prepared content from, uh, from my side. Any, any questions? Uh, there's a mic here, I see, and, and, and I have a few people from my team. I'm uh, happy to take any questions. Does it integrate with uh, Tetration at all? Uh, I know this monitors at application level, but Tetration is more at a hardware level. Yeah. Raj, you want to come to this? Uh, yeah. Great question, actually. So, PCI, Tetration, and Dynamics, these are three parts of triangle, if you will. And uh, we start off with ACI because purely from a network data center standpoint, it makes sense in terms of integrations. We are right in the discussions in between, uh, right, in the, right in the middle of discussions to talk about the exact details of titration. If you think about it, app dynamics and titration, these two cover a big stack together. They are a lot of complements, right? I mean, what titration does in this application dependency mapping and all those capabilities is it figures out what are all the processes that are present across all the hardware assets in your data center. Where app dynamics comes into picture is it tells you exactly what runs within that process. So putting these two together is going to give you a whole stack of uh, synergy. And uh, in terms of execution and implementation, those are details you're working out as of now. Thank you. And it makes a lot of sense for us. So thank you for the question. Any other questions? All right, you've been a great audience. Uh, we're excited to be here. Uh, I hope you go see the demo and, and reach us. Uh, we do have, uh, for, for all our customers through Cisco, uh, we do have a starter pack for, for you to get a good taste of uh, AppDynamics. Just ask your Cisco rep. Uh, it's called AppDynamics uh, uh, Starter Pack, and they should be pretty happy to help you with that. And, and hopefully, we'll see you very soon uh, through one of our AppDynamics sessions. Thank you. Hey guys, it's one o'clock 
on day four, last day of Cisco Live. I'm Studio B, right on top of World Solutions. Look who's here in studio with me for once. Oh my, oh my God. God, it only took the whole Cisco Live for us to get together in one place, but I'm happy to be here finally with yeah, you. Yeah, I'm excited, I'm excited. We're on our last day. We just heard the App Dynamics Innovation Showcase talk with Prathap Dendi. We're going to see a, a video about that, but first, I want to get some thoughts from you, Reggie. How has this entire experience been for you? I know how it's been for me. I want to hear how it's been for you. I mean, it's been an amazing adventure. My first Cisco Live, seeing all of our customers, all of our partners, seeing solutions coming together, learning about investments, yes. innovations, DevNet, hashtag CLUS. <laughs> it's, it's been a whirlwind, and to, to be honest, I feel like I haven't seen enough. <laughs> And there's definitely way more that we can do and the four days is not enough. No, it's not, not enough, enough at all. Not enough. And what do you think of this whole hosting thing? This was our first time ever doing this too, folks, so. <laughs> I, I think Annie has a career. Oh. Uh, she's going to be on ESPN real soon with Doris Burke and Rachel Nichols. They're going to have an all-female staff just running <laughs> in a couple years. That I can see it happening. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it happening. But it's been an exciting experience. For me to be able to speak with the people and meet so many bright minds, it was almost like having a chef's menu of Cisco Live set for me doing this hosting experience. So it was an absolute honor. I was Glad to be here with you over here at Internet Land and here live at Cisco Live. It was an amazing experience. We heard a little bit about App Dynamics and Business IQ, and Prathap Dendi had a chance to catch up with Mandy. App Dynamics is one of those game changing type of acquisitions that we've had. It had this effect where we can have conversations about application visibility in a way that we could never do before. Mm -hmm. I know that you know you said from a security background that this was like a whole new area for you. The applications piece and software and having a chance to talk to applications are, as our audience is a whole new thing for us. And you had talked about DevNet and developing and I was thinking, you know, this is definitely, it's so much exciting stuff that we're seeing and just how they complement each other and how we're constantly learning. Yeah, it is, very much so. When you think about Network Operations Center, because right, you know here at Cisco, we have day zero, day one, day two. You spend all of your day twos to infinities, and that's where App Dynamics comes into play. So let's hear a little bit more about App Dynamics with Mandy and Prathap Dendi. See this video. Hi, I'm Mandy Schneider, and I'm standing here with Prathap Dendi from App Dynamics. And Prathap, what is it you do with App Dynamics? Mandy, I'm a general manager uh, for Business IQ, which is a real-time business monitoring solution from App Dynamics, now a Cisco company. Oh, excellent. And how do you see the roles of IT changing in the near future? Uh, great question. You know, I grew up as an engineer and a product guy, and the role of IT uh, was always talked about as a true business partner, but finally, um, thrilled to see that happen now. Uh, the role of IT, not just watching over the systems and being the bottom line uh, watcher and automation, but really around how can we be a true business partner with the line of business. Uh, and that's emerging now and we're seeing it in some of the leading customers. That sounds very important. Uh, how do successful IT leaders align with and motivate great business? Yeah, so it's really about having the, the real-time data set to work with your line of business to be useful to them. You know, instead of waiting till end of the day or end of the month to tell them how their business actually happened. Let's say you're a retail customer. Instead of waiting till the Black Friday campaign is over and then telling them, hey, this is what you had. What if the line of IT, uh, IT leader, CIO, what if they can communicate real time to their marketing campaign manager saying, this campaign is doing great. This other campaign is not doing so good, right? Isolating that and saying where you're converting really well, let's put a bit more cloud capacity into that. That way we can see more top line growth instantly. Wow. Uh, that's the role of uh, modern CIO these days. Now we recently had one of our customers, Carhartt, the CIO was recently recognized as a top 100 best CIOs in the world. And one of the things that he said, John Hill said that is, now it's possible to establish a common business language, a common language between business and IT, mm -hmm. using the real time data and performance of the apps. And that is fundamentally a big advantage now uh, CIO has in these organizations. So they're truly a partner at the table, setting the strategy of the business and working with them directly in a real-time basis. Wow, and it's just, it's so instant, yep. right? Yeah. 
Well, it seems like every other day we hear about artificial intelligence, machine learning. Yeah. Where do you see the biggest opportunities for machine learning in IT and across the business? No, great question. So if you think about the visibility that people have into their applications, you know, if you look at most of the business models today, the software applications that they run, whether it's mobile or, or back end, that pretty much equates to their business model. So the lifeblood of a business is happening right there at the application layer. So the amount of data and insights they can get very quickly, so they can either course correct a bad outcome or, or double down for a really good outcome is where the action is, right? Now, the, the role of AI and ML for a long time has been about, depending on how much data you collect, how good you can train the ma machine data set, and then be useful. But the fact that now you have near instant data set that's coming in mm -hmm. makes AI and ML really impactful in the near term for the businesses. So now we're beginning to see in businesses like banking and insurance and retail, automotive, connected experiences where very quickly the business is able to use ML you know, at, at the time of processing itself, very quickly turn around and inform the business of what it needs to do to optimize the business. So we're, we're seeing that a lot more now. Okay. Yeah, just a few years ago that was not possible. I think the advent of cloud connectivity to the applications, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sensors in, in every walk of life, all of that is giving us, for example, AppDynamics at Cisco, a highly correlated data set that is finally useful to ML. And, and using that, our IT leaders are able to make real-time decisions. And that is a big change, and, and we love it. Uh, you know, part of, big part of being part of Cisco is the amount of telemetry that we're able to gather, you know, from the network layer to the data center layer, all the way to you know, security and, and Meraki. That highly correlated data set sits in the application layer for us at AppDynamics. We're thrilled, you know, our customers are thrilled that they're having the full stack visibility for the first time in their transformation journeys. So that's the exciting piece that I see here at uh, Cisco Life. That's amazing. Yeah. And what does it mean for AppDynamics to be part of Cisco? Can you expound on that a yeah, little bit? Yeah, I'd love to. You know, uh, AppDynamics has been uh, a fast growing kind of hyper growth company from Silicon Valley. Uh, you know, the cultures are, are very engineering, very, very similar to Cisco. And what we've seen is now we have access to amazing engineering talent all across Cisco, right? So we're about, you know, a small company compared to Cisco. And now we suddenly have uh, great access to not just customers and, and CIOs and then have that table uh, in, in those discussions, but also the amount of capability that Cisco engineering power has, we are leveraging that now, and you know, we just announced uh, our ACI integration uh, earlier today. Okay. And you know, if you are a Cisco customer and, and you, you have a data center that you build based on ACI, now suddenly the network, the policies, and the application layers all, all, all together. And that's a you know, fundamental advantage for you in the business to have Cisco as a partner. I know you already announced it, but yeah. can you expound on it right now? Yeah, happy okay. to do that, and that's why we're here. Okay. Uh, you know, the, the ability for your network layer, you know, right from the layers of data center, network, the policy settings, uh, to work directly with an application layer is the capability behind the ACI to AppDynamics integration. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've showcased uh, earlier today how that could be used for NetApps persona, it could be used for data center persona, and overall the CIO where they can benefit it from a full visibility, full stack visibility. Uh, and they can make quick decisions around this multi-cloud deployment. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly, let's say you're migrating to the cloud and you want to isolate your your most uh, prominent customers, let's say platinum or diamond customers, uh, and, and today you can do that. You know, your, your entire stack will give you the visibility around that user journey using AppDynamics on top of uh, ACI. Oh wow, that makes it so much simpler, and, yeah. and that's what we've been talking about yeah. this, this whole show really, is the yeah. simplicity. And, and the new role for IT, uh, mm -hmm. quite honestly, because for the first time uh, in my professional career, you have the full visibility, so that you could really show that data set to the business owner and say, hey look, you know, this is where business is doing really well, let's double down there. So that's, that's what we're excited about here. Sounds great. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Prathap. We really appreciate you visiting. Thank you for having us. Yes. It's quite exciting times. <laughs> yeah, thank Take you, Mandy. care. That was incredible. Love hearing that. AppD, App Dynamics, so we call it AppD for short, has now integrated with ACI, which means from the DC infrastructure layer to the app layer, even to the cloud layer, we've got full telemetry that allows us to automate for the best kind of experience that allows us to kind of have the entire data center system work together. Simple, it's not easy, but it's no, simple. It's and that's one of the challenges we have right now at Cisco and across the industry is that right. we have this influx of data. And big data analytics, we like to think about it. But what are you doing? We, I think we processed maybe, it was less than 10% of the data that's coming in to make 
actionable intelligence, and that's what we're doing with App Dynamics. Yeah. Making data work smarter, not harder. Yeah, there was this kind of phrase that I love that they're using when we talk about App Dynamics is that we get mean time to innocence for the data set our infrastructure team. It's the when the application isn't performing very well. Mm -hmm. Those application performance metrics that we get from AppD immediately lets us know, is it, the application, is it the infrastructure, who is it? So it's mean time to innocence. For a better look at this, because I know you want to see the demo. Yes, I was talking about the demo while he was watching, I want to see the demo. I want to see, see the, the demo. demo. We had a chance to step in with Kevin Wu to get a take, let's get, take a deeper look at this demo. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm standing here with Kevin Wu with App Dynamics, and we're about to see a demo. So, what are we going to see today, Kevin? Well, you know, our customers come to us with a lot of big, hairy challenges, and one of those challenges involves how do they know whether or not their software investments are actually paying off, and how do they tie that business outcome directly back to something that they did in their application. So today, I want to show a little snippet about how we solve those problems with App Dynamics. Sounds good. Great. Let's check it out. What we're seeing on the screen right now is called our DevOps Executive Dashboard. And as you can see across the top, we're surfacing business metrics, such as um, how many users are on the site. Now, imagine this is an e-commerce website, so it's just a standard shopping website. Um, where how many offers are we actually uh, sending out to our customers? Um, what percentage of those offers are actually converting at the end of the funnel? Um, and then also, how much revenue is being generated from this e-commerce website? So if you scroll further down, we have uh, a really interesting view here. On the left, we have user experience. So we're showing the response time for all of these e-commerce pages. So obviously, you want a very low response time to have a great customer experience. Um, and we see that in this window, there's a bump here in response times. It's showing that it looks like the response time is going up to about an average of about almost two seconds, which for our company is too slow. Um, and on the right side here, we're showing a chart of user conversions. And we see around that same time window, the number of conversions for those coupon offers has dropped, right? And um, we can see that on top of this, there was a release that was pushed out right when that change happened, uh, because we are able to tie into continuous integration systems like Jenkins, for example. Um, now, in this situation, uh, clearly there's probably something wrong, but we need to dig a little bit deeper. And if we look below, we're showing the response times for all of those really important user transactions. So if you're an e-commerce website, you care about your customers being able to log in, being able to check out their profile, um, download that coupon offer, and then actually go in and use that coupon. Um, and on the right side, we're showing that actual actual conversion funnel. So if you're a business person, you care a lot about how many users are actually going through. And we see here that there is an 80% drop off in this step where they're actually viewing that um, offer uh, from their profile down to the offer here. So that's actually a big drop off and we're concerned. And on the left side here, we're seeing that the performance of that, uh, bringing up that account profile is actually around 2.3 seconds on average. So we need to investigate. What we'll do next as, a, you know, as an IT team, we'll actually go and we'll take a look at the actual application okay. behind that offer. And we see here that we're now looking at a view of our full application topology. So this is the e-commerce app that this company uses. Um, it's a real-time view, so it's being built for you. You don't have to go ask your system administrator to go or your, your architect to go and draw this in Visio. Um, we create that visual diagram for that team automatically. And what we want to do is we want to begin looking at our most important business transactions. So if we're looking at a business transaction, these are essentially the actions that our users are taking in our website. And we see here clearly that there is a problem with that account lookup. Right. So if we double click on that, we can take a look at only the components that are servicing the ability to look at your own account. So imagine you're logging a website, you want to look at your profile. This is, these are the components on the, on the back end um, that actually service that request. And if we look here, we're actually scoring all of the transactions that go through this business transaction. And we see that there's about 75% of these transactions are actually very slow. So, hmm, that's a problem. Let's investigate further. So we can go and filter and look at all the transaction snapshots. So what we do is when there's a slow experience, we actually go and we take a really detailed picture of exactly how much time was being spent uh, behind all the actions to service that request. And if we double click on any of these snapshots, we're brought to a, a, a view where we can drill down and begin investigating what's going on. 
we see here that we can follow uh, the actual user through every line of code. Right, we're telling them um, how much time is being spent uh, executing this certain line of code. We can keep following that all the way down to what it looks to here. It looks like it's a MySQL transaction, uh, which is causing issues for us. So it looks like our app is having a, an issue where uh, we're not servicing uh, the users quickly enough through our MySQL database. So it's a database congestion problem. Okay. So what we've done is we went back to our dev team and we said, hey, here's our problem. We discovered it immediately. So you don't have to go hunting around and figuring out what's going on. Um, we know it's an issue with our database. So the development team goes back and decides that they want to roll out a new technology, like MongoDB, for example. That's a NoSQL database designed for scale. And they roll that out, um, and now we want to uh, test to see whether or not that rollout actually made a difference, right? But you don't want to affect, you don't want to do that to all your customers at once. You want to have like a strategy for how you do that release. You want to roll that out to only a segment of your users first, um, so you can test it. So what we can do is we can take a look at the application again, and we'll see that if we go to the new version of the release, which is version two, we've now added that MongoDB, which you can see it's right here uh, on the flow map. So that, that uh, database is now rolled out, and we can see here that it looks like the response time has dropped back down. So that's a good sign. But how do we go and validate that with our business counterparts, right? So what we want to do is we want to go to our release analytics dashboard. And what we're showing you now is we're comparing version one, which was the old version, which had that, that performance issue, to the new version that our developers spent so much energy working on, right? right? They spent a lot of effort rolling that out. And now we're, we're going to take a look to see what really happened. So version one had about 7,370 uh, users. Version two saw about 5,770 users. So we're actually, we're, we're sending fewer users to the new version. Okay. But if you look here, the conversion rate is actually much higher on version two, yeah. right? And not only that, the revenue is higher as well. Uh, $51,000 versus uh, $110,000. Right. So that's a good sign. Let's take a look, user experience. We have that version one that, was ha that had that uh, you know, high response time, and it looks like after that release dropped, it came back down. So version, so version two actually is, uh, is performing better than uh, version one. And we see here that it looks like version two's conversion rate also seems to have be in line uh, once again uh, with our original expectations. So, and if we take a look at the actual conversion funnel here, we have version one versus version two. And if you remember, in version one, we had the 80% drop off of users. And now we're seeing only a 38.49% drop off. So a much higher conversion rate overall. So in conclusion, uh, we've shown how AppDynamics can solve two really hard problems that IT teams face. Number one, we help you correlate business performance directly to application performance to help you validate that those technology investments paid off. And secondly, we were able to compare two releases using a canary release strategy where we showed that version two of our application, the new version, performed better than version one. And that's how, that's just a, a small segment of what AppDynamics can do for, for customers. Wow, that's impressive. Thank you so much, Kevin. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Now you've seen the demo. And what do you think? You know what? Uh... It's not magic, but it's pretty close. I was, I was pretty impressed. <laughs> Next uh, time you go shopping and you use an offer code, you're going to have to think to yourself, are they using an SQL database, a Mongo, Mongo database? How much longer is it going to take for me I'll once I click there waiting on Amazon to check like, out? You see, SQL, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm going to go to a Mongo database. <laughs> Where's <is> City? <laughs> Let's talk about a customer's experience with App Dynamics and Business IQ. We've got a Carhartt customer testimonial video right here. Take a look. In the retail space, it used to be about you discover a product by going into a store. Today, you learn about a product on Instagram. We see the industry is changing so fast. The speed at which things operate are not like they were even just five years ago. Here at Carhartt, everybody prides himself on being part of a company that is dedicated to the hardworking consumer, and that really shows through in everything that happens here. 
The digital first economy has really enabled us to connect with our end consumer, but it comes with the caveat that we've got to have a great user experience. We can't jeopardize the brand recognition and the brand quality that we have. In this industry, when customers complain, that means some customers haven't complained and you've lost that revenue. We didn't have real-time monitoring or performance management. We had slowness on orders and we wouldn't have known about that problem until customers started complaining to the help desk. We wanted to take a look at our application monitoring and our server monitoring. What we found was we were reporting out metrics around uptime that were not really reliable for the business. We were saying we were up 99, four nines, five nines. Problem was is that from a business process standpoint, we weren't really up. For Carhartt, relationships are a big driver in how we do business. And it became really clear that AppDynamics had that right culture to work with Carhartt, that sense of urgency and you know what was the art of the possible, so to speak. We were able to identify four or five key business transactions that were key to business process and business metrics, whether it was inventory related, order related, checkout related. Doing a lot of the work with AppDynamics on putting in the monitoring capability, we were now taking the next step, which was Business IQ. Business IQ provides a vehicle for both business colleagues and the IT colleagues to collaborate together on a single source of the truth, not only business metrics, but IT system metrics, so that we're operating from the same point of view. Cyber Monday, we were sitting in a conference room with our AppD business dashboard, real time, seeing how we were tracking for the day. Hey, we just pushed out a new ad. Are we seeing response? Yeah, we just saw visitors jump. We had an issue with orders dropping to our backend system, and we we were able to see it as it was happening and react to it before it ever impacted user experience. And that was a first for us. For Carhartt, we have a theme, we outwork them all. And as IT, we want to support that. It's about how can we work smarter? How can we work faster? How can we work better? With AppDynamics, they can help us outwork them all. A beautiful video. I love I mean, that. Very, very well done. I mean, it speaks about what App Dynamics can do for a company. I mean, you see how Carhartt increased their numbers on Cyber Monday, and Cyber Monday is crazy. Now. Yeah, helping our customers help their customers. And that's the key, right? You know, here at Cisco, we've moved away from just hardware. We're yeah. trying to bring hardware, solutions, services, provide unique experiences for our customers, dynamic experiences. So it's not just clicking a button, it's about having a great experience, being able to access the information when you need it to provide services for our customers. So it's, it's great to see it in action. I'm excited to see my demo in real life. I, you know, I like the demo. I like playing with the things. That's, that's my, that's you my are, thing. You well. are definitely showing that throughout yeah. this entire week. <laughs> we are actually coming up on just a little over an hour uh, on the closing keynote. We see folks that are trying to move on out of here to try to find yeah, they're some hustling, seats. they're hustling and bustling. Well, the World of Solutions has closed early today so that folks can go ahead and get their stuff in order and find some good seats. There are lots of things that have happened and we talked about a little bit earlier, there's just so much activities, we couldn't really fit it into four days. I mean, it's, it's been incredible <laughs> from the DevNet Theater. I wish, just the DevNet Theater, we could spend a day. The different demos, the different You could booths. just stay at DevNet stay for four days. It's incredible, and you go over to the World Solutions, you go to our partner community, we had the Security Village, we had the Collaboration Village, we had the uh, Cisco Gateway, yeah. which we're jealous of. They had their massages and their <laughs> alcohol. And Did you their, see us throw a look to the uh, Gateway guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like they had some and massages. Even Cisco Social has been online, and if you want to talk about Cisco Live or see what we've been talking about, hashtag, hashtag CLUS. That's been a lot of activity, and it makes you see how big Cisco is. I mean, it's even huge. across the pond. I'll say across <laughs> the pond, but across the street at yeah. the Hyatt, they had the ITM the IT manager session. All That's the whisper suites as well. There was so many activities that were going on. And honestly, for me, I was saying this earlier, some other folks, it's crazy because I've been at Cisco since 1997. You said since 2013. This is your first Cisco Live, uh, not my first Cisco Live. <laughs> but every year it changes. And so it doesn't really matter if you're brand new or if you've kind of been here. It's going to be different each time. And it's just incredible because also it's going to be bigger. Yeah, yes, I mean, just think about last night, our customer appreciation event. We had 20,000 people at Universal Studios. 
food everywhere. I've never seen that many food at Universal Studios. Let's go back to the beginning of the week with Chuck's opening keynote. Wow, here we go. You guys having fun so far? How many of you were here over the weekend doing fun things?